Do you have any recommendations for good lefty non-fiction books as burgeoning little lefty who wants to get better informed and isn't really sure where to start? Thank you so much for asking. Again, this is this is just so wonderful that people put their trust in us. Legends. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. I already feel guilty about not having read enough. <laughs> no, no, mate. Like you should. This is a first class honors master's person. At I got a two one. No, you go first. A master's. Oh, my master's. master's. Yeah, master's. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so please don't put yourself down, babes. I'm actually <laughs> really hot, so I actually do want to take the jacket off. <laughs> okay. Is okay. that bad politics? No, that's good politics. Well, look, 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 I'll do a Kim Kardashian look. No, and it. Oh, oh. I'll take this off. Oh, oh, oh God. I'm sure it sounds really good. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. nice. Oh, yeah, like this guy just gave me his jacket. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like wrapping my Clapton CFC, yes. Okay, so good lefty non-fiction books. So I was trying to think about this, which is a good first start. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, okay, for me, like I, I'm, you know, I'm an internet kid. I got most of my analysis through reading, through reading online articles and zines. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm embarrassed too. Um, <laughs> But I would say one book that had a huge impact on me in terms of like anti-capitalist feminist analysis would be Caliban and the Witch, which is a, like on the surface, it's kind of an account of the relationship between the witch trials in the 17th century and the birth of capitalism and the exclusion of women from like uh, the workplace. And it's fucking fantastic and timeless and brilliant. In terms of like early anarchist texts, I kind of was thrown in at the deep end with my ex-boyfriend giving me armed joy by a banana um, which has such motivational mes- messages as to shoot journalists in the kneecaps not endorsing it not saying it's wrong just saying that's what they said are you okay to post these as comments underneath our yeah, sure. underneath our live stream or something so that yeah. you know because because i imagine you know if you're just listening it to now yeah, it's, it's hard, to remember. hard to remember <coughs> Books. I mean, I have read books. <laughs> what books have I read? I've read like I've made a list, so this oh is bad. This is gonna be a new book out again. <laughs> no, I the, 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 the bubble bits. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on, you do it then. I'm okay, clearly so. failing. Maybe it will inspire me. <laughs> so first of all, um, two secrets, and oh god, I'm so losing my mystique on this. This is really bad. You're all gonna, th- you probably all think that I'm, like clever and read things, but actually, no, 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 I do. <laughs> No, no, I will say I have, and I'll tell you what I have. But also, two little tips. Number one, read review, not even reviews, but read basically other people writing about certain books. <laughs> I mean, most yeah. of my knowledge on Adorno, and I've been guest lecture on it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Like podcasts and reading about people yeah. writing about Adorno. But like, reading like blog posts about most of the like major dense densely written philosophers have like given me enough like cred and knowledge like yeah there don't believe the hype on that. yeah 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 that's, 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 reading is for nerds anyway <laughs> yeah but no but like like I like no, reading but also there's only so much time in the day and instead of spending three months reading one reading Capital mm. you could Capital is a good read yeah, I mean, but, yeah but like there are but in terms of Marx, for instance, 1844 manuscripts. Mm-hmm. So this is a very good start in terms of in terms of Marx. So 1844 manus- manuscripts. I would really say that those are that's a good intro. Um, so I will say what sort of what has influenced me. So, okay, this sort of goes in two parts. The way that I got sort of caught by the by the beauty and hype of, of I guess anarchism and 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 the way that our life could be has been through, well, when I was like 13, 14, it was through crime thing books because they do have that Yes, sign. they're brilliant. No, yeah, like, I mean, for, 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 like, 14, for 14 year olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah for baby anarchists. That one on the, ho- the housing one, the housing Oh, okay. Is that no, that's, oh, no, that's the info. that's not them. They just have a similar aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's when you're a teenager, like, don't go there now yeah. because they're, they're flipping, they're classes, then like, yeah. uh, they're tedious, lifestyle but is bullshit really for pretty. rich kids. But they're, they're pretty. But basically, so that's when you, we sort of begin when you're a kid. But what they're covering is basically situationism. And situationism mm-hmm. has that also really lovely side of seduction into politics. Oh, and I, I would say... talk about seduction with the BDSM question. Uh-huh. Tune in next week for me to talk about seduction. <laughs> but basically, it's so obviously uh, Guy Debord's Society of the Spectacle yes. and where you know Vanningham's Inventing the Future. And actually, there's a really beautiful book that... It's... An, I don't know. I'm 
discourse of saying it was actually published by Freedom, but I'm not sure. But it's definitely in the Freedom Bookshop um, in London. Uh, that is called Revolution of Everyday Life, which mm-hmm, has mm-hmm. the best sort of bits of situation. Isn't that, Vanag- it? Isn't that also Vanagon? Yeah, 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 but I feel like it has also other bits from other people. It's just mm. like a beautiful sort of collage. They definitely do sell that at Freedom. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful sort of collage of like inspiring sort of things. But look, but yeah, that's, really that's just sort of stuff around seduction. That's not real, I don't know, like... It's not real politics. No, it's you know it's but a it's certain. That's what you want, like like that's a, that's a political perspective. There's also like histories of like political uprisings and things. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. There's a, that's an intro to certain things. For me, it has been, anyways. Mm-hmm. But then you know, because I'm really interested in, I guess, cultural hegemony and um, sort of ways of 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 influencing that. Then I would definitely uh, inf- then yeah, then Gramsci obviously yeah. goes into that, and that's prison notebooks. Mm-hmm. Read some Stuart Hall. They're both very accessible. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, Stuart Hall's a great. Oh, wait, beginner. Actually. I have made a mistake. Revolution of Everyday Life is Van Nguyen's book, yeah. but Leaving the Twentieth Century is oh, the I don't book know that, that one. Leaving the Twentieth Century. That's the that's the book that has all the cute situationist bits. Uh, Apologies. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Fuck that up. Right. Um, that's by Christopher Gray. Yes, it's basically a, he sort of curates a, a, a lovely sort of. Um, I say sort of too much. I need to sort that out, sort of. Okay, I'm going to search it up. Um, and then Revolutions in Reverse by David Graeber was a good book for me to read. He just bitches about a lot of the left that It's great. I know David Graeber is problematic in certain ways. Oh, I don't know. I know. He's a favorite art. Like, he's a favorite target of many. But actually, I, 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 don't, I don't target he's him. Great. I don't have I any think his, well, I, I, I really, issues, really so. disagree with his um, analysis around pre- prefigurative politics. Okay, um, that's... No, he bought me enough gin and tonics for me to, like... <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Actually, I, I actually really think Revolution's Reverse is a good book. And he's a very accessible writer as well, which yes, is a good thing yes, about yes, him. Yes. I'll give him that. And once Chomsky dies, he's going to be somehow the most famous anarchist in, Brit- in the oh, world. So, so, so basically, we have to get on that life somehow. Um, and then a few publishers, of course. Verso Books and Pluto Press, AK and... Um, yeah, obviously Freedom, but... I would say Pluto are the most accessible because they just write the shortest books. Yeah, Zero used to be part of this yeah, unless, unless, until oh, until know. until they started publishing uh, people like Angela Nagel and a few other mm. weird old righty bullshitters. So, fuck you, Zero. Oh, I would say, no, like, do we that. have a problem with John Holloway? Don't know is that. He, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, I would say a book that I read um, a few years ago that's like a quite fun intro to like fuck capitalism is Crack Capitalism by John Holloway. It's written in a very flowery, cute way of like. If we only unite, then the colossus of capitalism will crumble under our collective strength. But it's also like got some nice stuff about like <coughs> sitting in a park as a means of like fuck work and stuff. And it's got like it kind of makes politics seem possible and accessible. But it's like very romantic. But it's, it's a fun it's a fun intro read, I think. To, yeah. Like, anti-capitalism in a general everyday sense. We're talking intro books here, anyways. Like we're not going to pretend to be like all, you know, like. Oh. Yeah, these are intro books. And also Inventing the Future by Alex Williams and Nick Chernak. It's excellent. It's sort of a, it's a, I, I've got it somewhere else. I would definitely... Um, good. It's a sort of... It's a really empathetic critique of, of, of the lack of ambition in the horizontalist left, mm. but without bringing in like party politics. It really is just sort of inspiring of, of, of how we need to really, really step up the game in, 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 in the 21st century, you know? I thought I thought it was really good. And then, like, I'm also just thinking in like specific fields. Like, obviously, I opened with like a kind of feminist analysis book, but also there's like Undoing Border Imperialism, which is like a quite good intro to like no borders politics. Um, like, again, you can get it in like Freedom or like Houseman's or whatever. And also, I just had another one in my mind of a different social. Oh yeah, and also just like okay, I know this sounds kind of hackneyed, and it's not really anarchist. Well, it is a bit anarchist. It's like is Homage to Catalonia by George Orwell is like a really accessible account yeah. of the Spanish Civil War, and it reads like a novel, but it's like nonfiction in the sense that it's an autobiography. Great shout out. And it's it, yeah, it's fun, and it also like he has this great bit at the back where he lists the different political parties and what their motivation is, like external to the main narrative that he's doing. And so like as an intro to like anarchist politics since the Spanish Civil War, and like someone made a joke to me the other day that like anarchist politics is only since the Spanish Civil War. Like that's. A good intro read. Yeah, nice one. And, um, yeah. Good. We'll try and list all the ones we remember from that. Yeah, and also, yeah, we're going to post all of that underneath the yep. thread, hopefully, so, so that should be of use. Uh, 